Yeah, thank you very much for the kind invitation, uh, AIOS and Dr. Devan Tully. So an ideal trabeculectomy pleb should really be low, such that it's not overhanging over the cornea, should be diffuse and should be posteriorly directed. As uh, you see here, it is uh, not anterior at all. And it should, uh, you know, you should get it in a recurring fashion in uh, most of your surgeries. But as we know, unfortunately, it can fail. And then you can get blebs looking like that. And you can even get large dysesthetic blebs. So uh, under filtration is what I'm going to talk about today. And the, in, the reason for it is usually subconjunctival or epistereal fibrosis. In the early stage, 20%, and in the late stage, 50%. You can also get encysted blebs, and uh, this can occur up to 20%, up to six months after surgery. So I want to take you through the rationale of standard management vis-a-vis -vis stages of wound healing so that we understand what modification we can do to these stages, uh, should they start failing at these stages? So where inflammation is concerned, either uh, due to polymorph nuclear, uh, nucleosides or macrophages, your uh, intraoperative dexamethasone uh, subconjunctivally and postoperative topical steroids help. Where fibroblasts are concerned, your minimal conjunctival manipulation, small incision, non-charring hemostasis, all these intraoperatively work and uh, topical steroids postoperatively. In the proliferative phase, when there is angiogenesis, granulation tissue formation, this is where your mitomycin C kicks in. And of course, your postoperative topical steroid works. When it's maturing, collagen disappear, uh, a deposition with disappearance of blood vessels, again, long term postoperative topical steroids help to control. And when it's failed, when there is inactive car, car tissue, unfortunately, these do not respond to drugs. So, where these stages are concerned, if the blood uh, is tending to fail, in other words, the pressure is tending to rise. What can you do? In the initial phase, inflammatory phase, you can definitely increase your topical steroids. In the proliferative phase, you can consider a suture lysis, or if you've done a releasable, do a releasable. Um, you can consider 5-FU injections and, of course, digital massage. When it is maturing, unfortunately, it is less uh, responsive to these. So you may have to do a needling, continue with the digital massage. And when it becomes inactive, you have a scar tissue, there either an MMC needling or revision in the operating room is what is recommended. So how do you recognize a failing bleb? In days to weeks, it has to have high IPV DBC and poor bleb formation. But of course, you can also get a congested bleb with cold through vessels, or you can get very high angry angry looking insisted pleb, so-called stenonsis. And in the uh, late stage, generally, you can get this kind of a flat pleb appearance. So in the early stage, within the first month, you, when your pleb, even your pressure is high and your pleb, uh, the, uh, uh, you feel the pleb may start to fail, you can consider suture lysis, laser suture lysis, or if you have a releasable, you can release your releasable. Where laser suture lysis is concerned, you do need uh, uh, specialized lenses which help you to magnify the view and concentrate your laser power. Here, this one is a Blumenthal one. You can also use the Hoskins, which has a flange at the uh, uh, near the lens, which is supposed to uh, retract your upper lip, but that may not always be necessary, as you can see here. So, your power, laser power that you use, should be uh, uh, high and your spot size should be the minimum. And this will help you to achieve suture lysis within one to two shots. If you do not have the infrastructure, laser, argon laser, as well as the lenses, you can always construct a releasable at the time of surgery. Shown here, you can go under the conjunctiva, take a through the partial thickness cornea, and then retrace your steps back as seen here under the conjunctiva again, so that you leave a loop at the cornea rather than a free uh, edge of the nylon suture, then you take a bite, uh, just forward it. You take a bite uh, of the scleral flap uh, to the scleral bed and then secure it with four throats only, alone. And you can pull it tight. Then what you do is just trim the sutures and bury it under your 
funding table, flaps. So here's a case where uh, you can see a, a releasable in position. Uh, in this particular case, at three weeks, there was a diffuse pleb. At five weeks also, so was it at one year. But you, as, you, as you can see, it is fairly easy to pull out this corneal loop with, suture, with the forceps, pair of forceps. Here, this is the same bleb, 10 pressure at one year, so it did not require you. Uh, fortunately, the suture has also not broken, not yet. So if you don't have the infrastructure, it doesn't really matter. Uh, however, with laser suture lysis, the difficulty can, you can face difficulty when the tenons is thick and you can even cause a conjunctival buttonhole. On the other hand, with releasables, if the suture is friable, you can cause breakage of suture. But there has been an RCT which says that you can use either procedures with equal efficacy. Um, where uh, uh, failing blebs with congested, uh, uh, with Corkscrew vessels are concerned, something like that. You can consider 5-FU injections. They can be pretty effective. You do it weekly, um, commence it second in the second week, and dose is about 5 milligram subconjunctivally, and you can do up to 10 injections. Complications are usually uh, transient in the form of SPKs and subconjunctival hemorrhage. So what, what I do is I actually constrict these blood vessels with phenylephrine alone, and then I use five of you injections. And here we have, uh, I, I injected eight to 10 millimeters away, and here are two blebs that have been managed with five of you injections in the early postoperative phase. And here these blebs are over one year old. When you have a high bleb, in other words, a tenon cyst. Initially, you should try aqueous suppressants. And if this does not settle, only then you consider needling. So here is a bleb which actually settled down on aqueous suppression alone. I will give it up at least four to six weeks before I consider any intervention. But where I do consider intervention are these kind of blebs, which are flat, where your flap edges are visible. This was referred to me. I do not do triangular flaps. I do rectangular flaps. Um, and uh, another one, yet another one here, which uh, has failed. And of course, in high blebs or the tenon cyst, as I was telling you, uh, they work, needling works very well. Please remember that the prerequisite for needling is that the ostium has to be patent. You need to do a gonioscopy and your antibiotic prophylaxis should be in position. And this is very critical in slit lamp needling. I do do a fair bit of uh, slit lamp blep needling and uh, I inject the mitomycin C. Here in this case, I'm showing you injection in a case prior to trabeculectomy, but this is the same procedure I follow for uh, needling as well. So you prepare the eye with antibiotics, as you see there, and then I load uh, mitomycin C uh, together with local anesthetic on an insulin syringe, and I uh, use a 30 gauge or a 29 gauge needle, and I inject it into the uh, subconjunctival space. Um, as you can see there, very, very slowly, raise, raise a bleb, and then use a cotton buds to, diff to diffuse it over a wide area, as you can see here now after diffusion. Then at the slit lamp, I would use a 29, 30 gauge needle on a two mil syringe. I bend it to 45 degrees. I use low magnification and needle entry should be at least two millimeters away from your bleb edges. Um, once, and of course, you, uh, you've done your uh, proper antibiotic for prophylaxis. So here we are, you use uh, backwards and forwards motion, either horizontal or vertical, depending upon what you're trying to cut, you do get a grating sensation and your bleb starts forming. If your bleb does not form with just epistural uh, needling, then you have to do subflap needling as well. You start to get a smooth passage. And uh, if you do it at the slit lamp, obviously you can evaluate it a lot better. You can also uh, measure the intraocular pressure. Um, yeah. If you so desire, you can do it in the uh, OR as well uh, under more controlled circumstances. Please remember it's a uh, clean procedure, not a sterile procedure. So here we are, uh, MMC has already been injected and that's why it looks as though a bleb has been raised. But when I'm doing my horizontal movements, I'm not seeing a very good 
left formation at all. So what I do now is I change my direction to vertical, as you can see there now. What I'm doing is cutting sub, sub uh, flap fibrosis. And once I'm able to do that, you can see how easily I can enter into the AC through the patent ostium. A little bit of blood in the AC is actually a good sign because that tells you there is communication between the subconjunctival space and the AC. And here you can see how the blood uh, differs in its appearance when you compare it to preoperatively. Complications, again, mostly are transient, actually, subconjunctival hemorrhage. It's actually almost invariable with mitomycin C. I have found you can get transient SPKs and you can get a needle tract leakage as well. Uh, you can uh, get hyphema, as I said, and uh, if the pressure is uh, uh, low, uh, you get hypotony, then you can get a chloridine effusion as well. But by and large, it is much has much less complications compared to a repeat surgery. So here, let's have a look at uh, the one-year follow-up of a case that I just showed you. This is the diffuse bleb at one year. And for the high bleb as well, you can see a very high encysted bleb has become a flat bleb, but has it failed? No, it hasn't failed because if you look closer at high magnification, you can see not only its diffuse nature, but you can also see, uh, begin to see microcysts. So that is why this uh, uh, blood was also functioning. So just to summarize, you have to recognize the features of filtration in a blood um, because the first six weeks are very crucial. They are the most critical. There are multiple maneuvers that are available in the post-operative period, but these are time sensitive. So one has to be able to pick it up in time to uh, use interventions to uh, ensure survival of the Bleb. Please remember, patent ostium is very important. And every bleb, I feel, has to be nursed, like Dr. Nayak said, and unlike follow-up in cataract surgery, one size does not fit all in trivicletomy. Thank you for a patient listening.